A trip south yields no clear answers for the East. Michigan's cricket stars secure 10 points but face steep odds in the central. That's a tremendous shot. The West comes down to Bay Area matchups in the closing weeks. That's well hit. The East right that. It's all happening this week on Emerging Cricket's Minor League Cricket Show. Too blessed to be stressed. You're mm, blessed. Too blessed to be stressed. You're mm, blessed to be stressed. Too blessed to be stressed. Job blessed. As we move closer to the Toyota Minor League Cricket Championships inaugural playoffs, and we look back on the glory and the carnage that came from week six, I welcome back to the program, Joel Manning. Joel, thank you for joining us again. What a week. Definitely walk a week indeed. Yeah, uh, there were 35 games scheduled for week six. 30 of them ended up being played as the Pacific abandoned four due to weather. The Atlantic Conference abandoned one. I'll give you one guess as to whose game got abandoned in the Atlantic. Probably a game to do with Orlando. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, versus Philadelphia. After beating the first place Stallions from the East, Orlando clawed themselves into the picture. And uh, two losses from Morrisville kept them there. So, so Orlando's still barely in the picture, as are the two Atlanta, team, Atlanta teams and uh, Morrisville Cardinals. Morrisville could, could advance with a no decision or a victory or losses from, from other teams. Uh, Atlanta Fire look to be pretty solid right now. Yeah, definitely. The playoff picture is starting to shape up a lot better now as we look at these zones. Uh, one thing that we were talking about last week was, would have been how some of these teams would have been affected by the loss of their players who went off to play for the USA and New Jersey Stallions comes up as one of those teams that drop points. And now all of a sudden their zone has opened up wide in yeah. terms of the playoff picture. Yeah, just last week we were talking about maybe the Stallions built up enough of a cushion and that entire cushion just went away in one weekend. So they lost to, to two Florida teams, the Fort Lauderdale and the uh, Orlando Galaxy. And they looked poised going into the weekend, even without their start. Yep, they did. But no, like I was saying before, it's opened up that zone a lot more. And, uh, you know, last week you were talking about the Empire State Titans and their outside chance as well. Their outside chance even better now because um, I think they have about five games left to play yes. and they're on 26 points, you know? Right. And they look very, very strong. They, uh, you know, we saw them in Morrisville. They, they, they won by a good margin, 30 some runs in the first game against the Cardinals. And then they used that game as practice for their next game against uh, Manhattan York. Oh, that was Red. phenomenal. Honestly, you were there and you saw it in person. I happened to see it behind the screen, unfortunately. <laughs> but you know, honestly, it was amazing. That innings from Barnwell was something to talk about for days now. Because what really impressed me was that they were under pressure. You know, he came to the crease and a couple of early wickets down and maneuvered the ball, ended up with a runner ball 50 but then ended up with 100 off of 67, I think it was, or something like that, you know, close to that, you know? And it really tells you about the, the type of innings that it was, you know? So it was really, really special. And if he could get two more of those, three more of those, you know, in the five games to come, then you still have Trevon Griffith and some others that will contribute. They, they could very easily find themselves copying a playoff spot. Baskar Yadram hit, hit a ball, the, probably the furthest ball I've, I've ever seen hit at Church Street Park, <laughs> went all the way to the tennis courts. And uh, somebody told me it was 120 20, uh, yards that he hit that ball. And that sounds just staggering. It sounds, un it sounds, it sounds impossible. You know, it sounds like a video game. But um, 
<laughs> when you look at when you see where the ball where the ball went, you you think yeah, yeah. that that might actually be, have gone that far. Uh, so so yeah, they're they're a they're a very deep batting team. Uh, seeing them in person, very impressive. I would not be surprised if they make a run right here with five games to go. Just now getting hot at the right time. Um, and you know, in that, in that division in the East, there are 14 games still with context. That's a lot of games. That's how thick things are in the East. Five of those games involve the new England Eagles, which aren't even in contention. They could easily spoil somebody's party. You know, they, they could easily spoil somebody's party coming up. You know, these games, the back end games right now are, are, are going to be most crucial for these teams. And now is not a time to make a mistake. You know, watching the games this weekend, we saw a lot of fumbles in the field. And that's something that I believe teams are going to be looking to sharpen up on coming up now. Because um, in a previous interview, um, Ludic, yes, Willem, I was chatting with Willem. And he was telling me, you know, that he reminded me of the saying, which is that, batsmen you know they win games but bowlers win championships and you know to add to that now you know the fielding it is what is going to complement that bowling effort you know and uh, if i from my belief now i think that any team that can put together a solid fielding performance they are going to win this championship not just win a couple games in the back end but they're who are now going to win this championship you mentioned bar you met you mentioned uh christopher uh, Barnwell's uh, century. I believe he was dropped twice that innings, right at the boundary, spilled right over the boundary for six yeah. think, both times. And, you know, he's not a guy you want to drop. You know, the Morrisville Cardinals had to be wondering where that where that fielding uh, was the night before when, when the Yorkers beat them with tremendous fielding in the last couple of overs. You know, and Morrisville ended up losing by a single run in, in one of the most dramatic games of the season. It's true, honestly. So, yeah, once again, I just think the fielding for me is what's going to decide this tournament. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's going to be thin margins like that, uh, especially with, with so many games that matter. Then you have in the West, we have a lot of excitement. We have three teams right there against each other at the top of the table. Uh, two with 38 points and one with 34. The East Bay Blazers, look, looking like last week, looking like maybe a favorite for the division, have now slid into third place, losing to the team that you picked out last week as be as having the hardest road, the Michigan Cricket Stars. And the Michigan Cricket Stars, like I am impressed with the cricket that they're playing. Um, funny enough, just um, a little bit earlier, I was chatting with their leading run scorer, Nikhil Kanshan, you know, and uh, with performances like him, then there's Nicholas Curtin, Nico Bolters, you know, scoring a couple of runs as well. Matthew Ford is in leading wicket takers. They have pulled together a, a very good squad. You know, it's just unfortunate that they haven't won one or two more games, but currently they have a mathematical chance of still progressing depending on what happens in their zone. But I'm honestly impressed with what I've seen from the Michigan Cricket Stars. Yeah, and, and they're young, too. They have a lot of very good young players, too. Ryan Scott, 25 years old. Uh, Matthew Ford, I believe he's 21 years old. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they have a bright future. So let's see how things develop there. They, could, uh, they, they still have an outside chance in the Central. Um, they're going to have to win out against the Chicago Blasters. Unfortunately, they don't have any games against either of the teams that are ahead of them. So they're going to count, yeah. they're going to have to count on the Irving Mustangs to, to, to muddy up the waters. Yep. Certainly, certainly, certainly. But then when we look at, no, the other zone, no, in the Pacific, like, what are your thoughts there? Who do you think are the two teams that are going through? Because Golden State Grizzlies, Silicon Valley Strikers, East Bay Blazers, who do you think is going to go through? Well, I think that's a really tough question. <laughs> that's what I think. I think, um, you know, I think Silicon Valley miss, missing uh, their two top bowlers um, with Team USA right now. I think that's gonna that's gonna show up. I, I I can't imagine it not showing up, especially when the when when the difference is so small. East Bay's got such a large. They I believe East Bay leads the entire league in net run rate, and they're in third place in the West. So I think it just kind of that's maybe just a signal of how good they are as a as a team. Mm -hmm. I think they're. I think I, I got to say that they're probably going to make make one of the spots. I shoot, man. Now I'm going to be picking picking uh, favorites here. But <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I think I got to I got to I got to think that East Bay is going to overcome uh, Silicon Valley strikers. So uh, but, you know, I'm usually wrong. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Speaking of the West, Seattle can play spoiler there. 
they play each of the three teams before the season ends. And so Seattle might have something to say about this. They're in fourth place. They're, they're a strong team. They found themselves in a tough division. And uh, I mean, honestly, this is, it's so very difficult to make the playoffs. There are going to be very good teams just, just on the outside this season. And we're going to, you know, if, if the playoff format stays this way, we're going to see that year in year out. And uh, you know, I personally, it puts, it puts great context and, and weight on the, on the regular season. And I love that myself. It's true. Honestly, what you want is to have a competitive league. Like you don't want it to be a case where you have two dominant teams in every single zone and there's no real competition. There's no real fighting for spots. So I think that the way the zones are situated right now, it really has put the emphasis on making sure that you play good cricket from beginning to end. Because if you don't, you know, if you have half of a good season, well, then you're going to miss your name when it comes to finals day. So I think that is really good when you think about it overall for, for the competition itself. I know the league has gone out of their way to try to reschedule games that have, that have been rained out, which is something that cricket fans all over the world have clamored for, for in, in international cricket and in franchise cricket for forever, as long as I've been following the sport. So I think it's excellent that they do that. Um, you know, they'll, they'll polish up that, that aspect of the game in the future. But yes, you know, when you have such tight, narrow margins deciding who fits in the playoffs and who's on the outside looking in, you, you want to have those games made up whenever possible. And certainly after all, we, we've come to watch cricket. All right, Joel. Well, thanks a lot. No problem, Nate. It's always a pleasure. Here we go. As we've discussed throughout the series, Church Street Park will be the home of the inaugural Toyota Minor League Cricket Championship Final during the first weekend of October. Last weekend, the ground hosted three Week 6 games as the Manhattan Yorkers and the Empire State Titans visited with hopes of improving their respective playoff situations. The Morrisville Cardinals entered the weekend only one win away from clinching a playoff berth. The first game saw the home team face the Empire State Titans for an interdivision matchup. Up until the death of the first innings, Morrisville seemed poised to limit the Titans to a fairly slim total. But all that changed when Bhaskar Yadram and Navin Stewart scored 41 runs in the final two overs of the innings. Morrisville never got the partnerships they needed in the chase and fell by 35 runs in spite of a half century from opener Ruvindu Gunasakara. And it will run away for four, so that brings up the 50 here. The Cardinals would turn their focus onto the next game against the Manhattan Yorkers. The Yorkers were themselves searching for a victory to improve their playoff standings in the airtight East Division. The Yorkers batted first and put up 139, thanks again to good batting in the death. That one is heaved through the leg side. Devishwari Prashad boosted the Yorkers with 31 runs from 17 balls, including 10 from the final two balls, to put the Yorkers just around par. Had bit below as this one comes down. Oh, there we go. That one's going to their horse to on it. Batting without USA batsman Jasker and Maholtra, the Cardinals looked to wicketkeeper opener Lahiru Malantha to set the tone. And it's clear the boundary for six. And he did so with a feisty 44 from 29. The plan here. Oh, straight back into the hands. Ryan Wiggins and Sibukumar Duvarapu continued to pepper the Yorkers bowling with the fourth wicket partnership of 64 runs. That's very big from Ryan Wiggins. What a shot! He has his nails. It's a nail biting finish at Church Street yes. Park. We love yes. these. We love these. Can't get it away. They're going to pick up one. The fumble. Oh, they're going to come back for the second. And the Manhattan Yorker. And that brings us to the final over. And it's best. But still, it'll be tough for the Cardinals. It'll be 11 from the final over. But if you are just joining us, you've come at the perfect time. 11 runs from six deliveries for the Morrisville Cardinals to get the victory here over the Manhattan Yorkers. And 10 runs for, do you dare me to say it, the Super Over. No one likes those two words, but here's a shower here. That's been cracked. That's been cracked. And there's the field, and there he's taking the catch. I'll tell you what, and it's crazy pandemonium here. The Morrisville Cardinal double exactly quiet. A pin you could drop in there right now. And all the attention is going to be on Siva Kumar. He has to be the one to get it done. 11 off of five and Manoj Acharya. A perfect start to his over. And now Siva Kumar has to get it done for the Morrisville Cardinals. 
And this is what we've been wanting here at Churchy Park, an exciting finish. We've had one last year in the exhibition, and now we have another one. Again, 11 runs separate the Morseville Cardinals from playoffs. Uh, let me repeat, 11 runs separate them from playoffs. The captain on strike, Acharya comes in. Here's Siva. Goes big! Goes big! Siva Kumar has launched this one! It's out of here! Siva Kumar with a massive hit! Manoj Acharya couldn't get it right! Wasn't the worst of deliveries, but Siva Kumar with a very good looking shot has fired that one into the crowd. Five from four. What a shot! And that now puts the Marshall Cardinals one hit away from making and holding on to that playoff spot. Siva gets this one away. They're going to push for one. They obviously are going to come back for the second. Looks like they might get it quite comfortably in the end. In fact, no! He's gone! He's gone! The wicket! Is he? He is gone! Yorkers are celebrating! Siva Kumar is on his way! And there are still wrinkles to be had in this game. This game is far from over. It's going to be Rohan Fudke coming out. So two under-19 USA players going to be at the middle to face these last three. And where else would you rather be than Church Street Park tonight? Because we need four off the final three to bring the Cardinals to the playoffs. Rohan Fudke on strike. And Gupta, he is at the non-strikers. And three balls to come, four needed. Here's Asharia. To Patke, oh, he's looking to go. And it might be another run out here. In fact, it is. It does by the looks of it. He's in, he's in, he's in. And he's in, he's in, he's in. He's in. Two balls to come from Ocharia. Three runs needed. And whatever you think about that run out call, the call is the call. And Rohan is on the non strikers end. And Adi's at the strike. A little bit of controversy. Bring him into controversy by the box. But from yeah. my vantage point, I look like, oh, but a run counts. And Adi swings and misses. Swings. Misses, are they going to get a run out? And he's run out now, so... He's run out this time, finger goes up. Aditya Gupta is on his way. Manhattan Yorkers, it's another run out. And what's going on here for the Morrisville Cardinals? It's all happening here at the moment. Run outs galore, six is all you want. You get catches out in the deep, and now that brings Sanjay Stanley out. And I'm not sure why he was catching the dugout so long, but he has been brought out to run around with Rohan Fudke. Guess what? This is the situation we saw last in the exhibition. Three runs, one ball left to go. Here we go. It's been quite an over. Wicket six, wicket by wicket. Goodness me, what an over here for the Manhattan Yorkers. Three from one, two for a super over. And can you say pressure for the youngster Rohan Fudke, under 19 selectee? He's now here. Here he goes. Rohan Fudke swings, misses. That should be it. It will be it. The Manhattan Yorkers, is the ball dead? It will be now. He is run out. The Manhattan Yorkers have won it. Unbelievable scenes here at Church Street Park. It seems like the entire crowd cannot believe what's just taken place. Unbelievable. Oh my goodness me, this is a stone's throw from my house and my God, am I so glad it is because the excitement, I could, I know my family's feeling it from their living room floor right now. Unbelievable finish here and one of the best finishes you'll see all minor league long. You know the home crowd is deflated, some groans coming from the crowd and it's the two batsmen walk back defeated, but a valiant game and an exciting game of cricket here between these two fantastic sides. Yeah, and the crowd silenced a lot of Morrisville fans here. The crowd has been silenced, but it's been a day for the New Yorkers. It's a day to forget for Morrisville, but definitely it's all in the past now. Even if it's just a few minutes in the past, it's all about going forward for the Morrisville Cardinals, going forward for the Manhattan Yorkers. What will we see? Minor league, it just keeps getting even more entertaining for us. Yeah, we got a very young team, a very few senior players like me, Ryan and Ruby. Lahiru, so the four, rest of all, rest all of them are like, they're playing for the first time. I mean, last year they played the examination matches, but that doesn't count much. But so this is a very good learning experience for them, how to come out of it and how to handle it. So yeah. Um, I think it was very good for us to to keep our nerve during the end, especially under pressure. Yeah, it was a tight game, and you have to be able to to perform under, under that kind of pressure. And the guys really held their nerve and moved around well in the field. But I think. At the start of the day, we would have taken 140 as a score because we looked at the pitch, it looked pretty dry. And if, if, if anything, if you look at the first game that was played, I think 140 was a decent score. But at the end of the day, the pitch kind of played a little better in the second half with the Jew and that kind of stuff coming into play. But we still managed to get it pulled off and managed to get the win. We work 
on a regular basis with our death bowling. So we were fairly confident uh, in order to restrict them with 140. I think Manoj has been very great first man and he's one that gets early wickets first with the new ball and then he's always up for the challenge in the death. Um, we really rely on him to do a, a very good job and he really hits the mark most of the times. On this wicket, if Shane was, wasn't on the field keeping and making those decisions, I think the game would have most likely gone the other way because the exact the same thing happened against Philly last game that we played. It was we lacked the leadership on the field that was evident and we lost the game, right? So his presence is immense for us. Saturday's winners met on Sunday, which meant somebody was going home with two wins. Eight points would really boost either team in the playoff hunt. Unfortunately for Manhattan, Christopher Barnwell decided to score minor league cricket's third century. And Damian Jacobs' five wickets made sure the Yorkers were never really in the game. A matter for those guys out there in the West. Yeah, I agree, Alman. I think we've got the Blazers sitting at 28. And that's the Pfeiffer. Damian Jacobs has it chipped up right back to him. And that's going to be the... Yeah, obviously, we, we assessed the conditions yesterday. And you know, we know what shot is on and what we need to do on, on the pitch. So that gave us a bit of a head start today and, and know how the way to play. It was good. I was um, feeling good. Um, the team posts a really good total. And um, we're asking the batsmen to come alive and score a big total so the bowlers then could do the job. And they did the job today, you know. Kudos go to the captain, uh, Christopher Barnwell, for well played 100. So it left for me as a senior bowler to just go out and do the same thing in the bowling department. Yeah, it's always good to play teams away from, from your, your zone, you know, the cross zone. That, that's very good and it gives you a fair idea to expect Know, know what to expect going forward. So, cause sometimes you might meet those same teams in, in the playoffs and that will give you advantage and know how to play and how to plan as a team. So, you know, it's all good and well to, to play different teams and, and see what they have to bring to the table and adjust to different conditions, you know. It's been playing on, on three different surfaces, you know. We have the pitch, then we have the Austria turf and the matting as well. So, it's obviously the players need to adapt and adapt quickly to, to the conditions. Uh, well, going forward, I think there are five more preliminary games. So it's just about, you know, getting some wins. So it would be important in the next few weeks to get as many wins as possible. I think once you do that, we can we can get over the line into the playoffs. Our chances are good. If I look at the team, we have, we have balanced in all departments. We have good batters, good finishers, good bowlers, good feelers. So we didn't start the tournament as though we wanted, but trust me, we're going to finish it or we should. Here we go. Our guest this week is currently third in the Pacific in run score with 384 in 10 innings, and he's done it at a strike rate of 152 in the low-scoring West Division. I'm talking about Sujith Gowda of the East Bay Blazers. Welcome to the program, Sujith. Thank you for taking the time to join. Thank you so much, Nate. Thanks for having me up. Yeah, of course. Uh, you, you hail from Karnataka where your cricketing journey stalled a bit and you've been moved here to the USA for a better opportunity for your career, for both your education and your cricketing career. Have, have you surprised yourself with how well you've adapted? Uh, being being from uh, such a background in, uh, in Karnataka, I've been playing on different conditions, different pitches, different wickets and all over the country. So uh, I knew when, I, when I'm going to come here, things are going to be a little different, but uh, adapting to the situation, the pitches, the conditions. Uh, initially, it was a little difficult, but then uh, I think uh, it didn't it didn't take too much time because uh, there was already a culture of cricket uh, in me. So I think it was just some uh, practice sessions, some time to analyze the game, and then it went well. So yeah. All right. Were, were you surprised at the amount of cricket played in the Bay Area? Uh, yeah, initially, yes. Initially, yes. I knew there is a lot of cricket uh, in, in the US, but then initially I didn't expect to be this good at this professional level. So a little surprised, but uh, it feels good to be part of the system. Yeah. What has been the most difficult aspect of life, of adapting to life in the USA? Uh, to be honest, I think not, not uh, much of difficulties I've been going through at this point of time because I'm occupied mostly with my school, uh, with playing cricket, and then been getting a lot of support from a lot of people here since I moved. So I, I didn't find it that difficult with respecting, uh, respect to adapt to different conditions. Uh, it was all fine, to be honest, yeah. So your team currently sits in third place in the West. 
in spite of boasting the best net run rate in the entire league. You've got four games remaining. Anything can happen. The, the division is very tight at the top. You have two games with Golden State, one with Silicon Valley, and one with fourth place Seattle, who is no slouch themselves. Uh, how are the Blazers going to handle the pressure of playing four huge games? Uh, I think uh, the, the whole team is a set of complete professionals from everywhere, from the locals, from the people from outside, everywhere. So uh, what we've been doing from game one to till date is just taking a game at a time, irrespective of the opponents. I don't think so. It would matter much to us because we are backing our strengths. Uh, we just know what is our role. And then we're just trying to do that. It's just another game, another opponent. And then uh, I don't think so. It should affect too much. But I know it is one of the most important weekends uh, for us playing playing the Bay Area teams. But uh, again, it's just one more team. We know our roles. We know our uh, uh, thing for the team. So I think we are fine. <laughs> so so what are your personal goals for cricket? Uh Personally, uh, I've been, I, I might end up playing different teams at different situations at different places. Every time I might be at different uh, cities of different teams picked by different play, uh, owners. So I just feel for my, for my batting role, any team I get into, my role is to fulfill as a complete batsman, uh, give the best to the team. And then from there, contribute to the winning cause of any team I go to play. And then obviously, uh, from there, I'm looking forward to play uh, uh, Major League Cricket. That's the first thing for me at the moment. And then from there, I just want to go play uh, bigger leagues. Might be CPL, Big Bash, or any other higher standards of league uh, where MLC is going to be the root cause for me. So that's that's the goal for now. So and long in the longer run, probably, uh, if things go well, if I'm, I'm good enough, then uh, USA Cricket as well is something on the long, on the long run for me, yeah. Excellent. So East Bay have three players from the USA U19 national team, Skanda Rohit Sharma, Rohan Pausanapali, and of course, Sanjay Krishnamurthy. The Bay Area is obviously stacked with young talent. Has that surprised you much? Uh, uh, when I came in here, it, it was great to see all the young players here because I've been with them in the identity camps. I've been seeing them in Houston and elsewhere. So uh, I knew Sanjay from uh, Karnataka, Bangalore as well. So I know I, I know uh, how good they are. So uh, not surprised about them playing this good cricket. But uh, like I mentioned, these are one of the teams where you see a lot of young people also contributing to the team. So yeah, uh, not that surprised, but I'm happy for the young boys there. It's it's great to finally have a, a domestic uh, program here, a, a domestic league. Um, that's coast to coast, which is a difficult thing to do in a country of this size. Uh, when I think even more into the future about Major League Cricket, I have high hopes for the standard of it in the first place. And, uh, you know, I think it'll be really exciting. When you first heard about Major League Cricket and you first heard about cricket in the United States, um, was it something you wanted to be a part of immediately? Uh... I, I, I did uh, hear about the setup completely and then I was told how it's going to be handled and then it looked completely professional and it did really make sense for me to uh, start a new opportunity at this point of time to build my cricketing career and it, it, it I just went my belief and it looked really good uh, apt at the moment and then went when I got feeling but after I came here I realized it that yes it is actually true and it is actually uh, the best system best setup to grow as a cricketer. Uh, I'm glad I could make this decision. Well, that's that's yeah. very encouraging to hear. So far, everybody I've talked to has been very optimistic about it and reinforced about their decision. And that, that's, uh, that's excellent to know. Yeah. Um, I think cricket's going good places in this country and it's nice to be right there and seeing it happen right in front of me after waiting a while for something like this. Uh, I think, yeah, uh, you know, the right people are handling the right things here. Uh, I couldn't expect any better professionals to do it. I think it's in the right hands. It's safe hands. And the the love for all the uh, people here towards cricket is high, very high. And then that's why I think we're getting support from all over. I think the support from uh, different owners, the people watching us, the kids, I think we have various support system. And that's, that's the reason for all of us to probably do well in the sport. And then 
build build a good uh, cricketing circuit in this country and i think it's going really good well great well thank you very much for joining me sujith uh good luck to your team i know the next couple of weekends are going to be really really tight yeah thank you so much nate uh, it is great talking to you yeah i think the next two weekends are going to be good for us it's uh, high competitive games i hope it turns out uh, enough for you yeah. well well whoever gets through in this division will have already played a playoff basically so oh, they'll, yeah. already, <laughs> they'll already be uh, battle tested you know <laughs> yeah very true i agree to that yeah here we go Every week on the show, we take time to discuss the emerging players around the country. And every week, like this week, I'm joined by Aman Patel. Aman, how difficult is it to keep up with all the emerging talent in the league this season? Well, I think we originally thought it was going to be easier and easier, uh, but it's getting harder and harder. More more kids are stepping up and, and it just, so some people are going to slip through the cracks, but hopefully, you know, by the end of the season, we can all round out to everybody. But it's become so very challenging to find all of these top performers. Yeah, honestly, uh, I'm uh, I'm probably never going to think anything is going to be easy ever again because of uh, you know <laughs> this, this season has been has been a real challenge to cover and it, and I mean that in all the all the best ways. There's so much going on and uh, it's really impossible to get to cover all of our bases, but we we do our best here and you know it, as the season goes on at the very end of the season we're going to we're going to look at the at the at the data a lot more closely. And we will assess and, and choose our emerging player, the uh, emerging team of the tournament. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully we don't we don't let players fall in the cracks then. So over in the Atlantic, who stood out for you this weekend? Well, for me in the Atlantic, there's always terrific performances and there are always people that are going to slip through. But I looked at three guys in particular. I looked at Vasco Yadram, who I still will not believe is 21 until I see a physical birth certificate. This man is massive. I was standing next to him in uh, Morrisville and he, three of me, it probably still isn't him. So, but he scored a quick 58 from 30 against the Morsel Cardinals. I also had a terrific catch along the boundary. Aditya Gupta for the Morsel Cardinals took three wickets and seven overs over the weekend. And then Athindra, who's been a you know consistent guy we bring up, he bowled one over, but in that one over just gave up two runs and took a wicket. So I felt that those three were probably the biggest three performers out of the Atlantic. Yeah, and, and, you know, some things fall through the cracks as far as the, the stats are concerned, and sometimes you notice things when you're up close with the players. And us being at Church Street Park uh, every weekend, we get to see, uh, you know, just some of the players in the league up close. And, and, and you, you go away from these, from these games uh, taking, you know, some, taking an, an opinion about players. And one of the players I thought was really intense was a player that shares your name, Amon Patel. Uh, from the Yorkers, uh, just watching him prepare and watching his laser focus. Uh, you know, he didn't have great numbers this weekend or anything, but but man, he he certainly caught my attention. Yeah, you walk away from uh, Churchy Park and you see he's just so dialed in on every single rep, no matter what it was, practice or in game. He's so dialed in; and it was really fun to watch. Definitely. So over in the Pacific, well, we saw USA U19 fast bowler Abraham Valesa Magari make a difference with the bat this week scoring 44 off of 37 not out in a winning chase against SoCal. Ali Sheikh performed with the ball once again, as he typically does, and Karthik Gattapelli took six wickets in his 12 overs, and he stands alone as the leader in wickets in the Pacific. Also, Sanjay Krishnamurthy did his normal thing over in uh, with East Bay. Um, I, I don't know if a week goes by without him having a good game. There's some tough choices this week, Amon. Who are we going to name as Emerging Cricket's Emerging Player of the Week? A lot of tough choices, as you said. We don't know if a week has gone by until we see uh, Sanjay come up with a big performance. Uh, <laughs> but I don't think Sanjay is going to get it a third time this week. And for me, I think we're going to go with the guy who's slipped under our radar for a long time, who's at the top of the wickets. I'm going to go with Karthik Gattapalli uh, for just his six wickets. And then, of course, being at the top of the wicket leading table. So I'm going to go and give the emerging cricket emerging player of the week to Karthik Gattapalli. He's been very steady all season. He's been stellar all season. Uh, Smith Patel did a feature on him last week that was excellent. Uh, Smith, Smith Patel from Crick Buzz, and we'll have Smith on later in the season, probably during the playoffs, to talk about you know some players. It's great to get get a well-rounded perspective from everybody. But um, 
But yeah, Karthik is a player we've talked about before, but not nearly as much as he deserves. And so I'm I'm happy to name him as the uh, player emerging player of the week this week. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's well deserving of it. And I think his time is I think it's been a little bit overdue for, to give him this award. Yeah, definitely. Well, thanks, Aman. Uh, once again, it's a uh, it's 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 one of my favorite uh, portions of the program. Finally, it's time for a very special segment for me. Things I like about week six. Normally, I fill this with all kinds of special little things that I notice, but this week it's tough to top one very special thing, and that is Jess Garin's record setting knock in Oman. I'll just let the video do the talking. I'll have to into the 140s now. Oh, that's a huge strike over the offside this time. Brilliant batting. Six more back to back sixes. 50 over cricket. It's the first ever ODI century. Six, six. And six more, just about. These legendary names, look at where he's batting. He's batting outside his off stump. Gonna smash this one down the ground. That's six more. Six. Gaudi Toka could be joining a list of bowlers who've gone for six sixes and over. He needs two more, Malhotra. Looks like he's gonna have the fifth. Six, 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 six. It's gone all the way. It hung in the wind for a second, but I knew that one was gone as well. By Herschel Gibbs back at the 2007 World Cup. We saw Yuvraj Singh do it at the T20 World Cup. Can Jaskaran Malhotra join that list? It's got to go all the way. Can he do it? There it is. Sixes. Six of the best. He's at 36 up the final over the innings. Jaskaran Malhotra, take a bow. One of the great one day international innings of all time. 173 he's going to finish with. He joins the list. Herschel Gibbs, Yuvraj Singh, Kyron Pollard, you keep naming them. I don't know who else is on that list, but Jaskaran Malhotra is there now.